Friends, welcome back to the homestead. Two days from now, we're going to pick up two baby pigs up in northern lower Michigan. We're gonna bring them back to the homestead and they are going to live in this paddock right here. This paddock is where our goats live and we recently just went on vacation and prior to doing so, we cut our fence. There's a fence that runs to separate the two paddocks. We cut it so that the goats would have full access to both paddocks. Plenty of tall grass over on the pig side. Grass was pretty short over on the goat side. So we just wanted to make sure they had plenty of food while we we're gone. Today, our task is we are going to sink a new post in the ground right here. We're gonna reattach that fence to it. Yesterday, we went to Family Farm and Home. We bought a new gate. We're gonna get the gate installed, and then if we have time, we're going to run a single strand of electric wire around the bottom of the pig pen to keep them from rooting up against the fence and trying to escape and stuff like that. So that's the project for today. I'm going to run up to, I need a lot of tools today, so I'm gonna run up to the garage, grab the four-wheeler, grab a bunch of tools, and then I'll meet you guys back out here in a few minutes. I was shocked last night when we went to, well, family farm and home, but tractor supply was basically the same of how stupidly expensive gates can be. This was like, I wanted a six foot gate, <clears throat> excuse me, so I could fit both my tractor through and my lawnmower through if I needed to. I didn't need anything bigger than that. So I'm thinking six foot, that's gonna be good. This one doesn't have anything. It's just basically like rails. $100 for a six foot gate. The one that I wanted was the ones that have like the wire at the bottom, like hog panel at the bottom to keep the pigs from getting through. $240 or something like that for, for a, gate, a six foot gate that size. Crazy. So I don't know if that's normal or if that's like um, pandemic, Ukraine war prices, or, or whatever you want to call today's day and age, the economy that's happening right now. I don't know if it's always like that, but a little bit ridiculous if you ask me. So it's like 36 and a half inches between this hanger and this hanger. So I need 36 half, 36 and a half inch 36 and a half inches between my holes for the hangers to line up. And now I just need to determine this bottom hanger, how high it needs to come off the ground in order for my gate to sit how I want it to. So our normal cycle that we've come up with for our homestead is that we we raise two pigs, hogs, whatever you want to call them, every two years. And for me, my name's Todd, my wife's name is Rachel. We have five children between us, not all of which that live nearby, but two hogs every other year provides me and Rachel with all of the pork that we need for that two year period with plenty to give away to our children who live nearby and my parents who live nearby as well. So we gift a lot. We give away lots of bacon. We give away lots of pork chops. We have big holiday meals, which are often hosted at our home where we have cook up the hams and things like that. And Easter and Thanksgiving and Christmas so it seems to work out well for us just doing two we do not sell any of our pork or anything like that the first year we raised pigs we did red wattles was the breed we got them from over on the west side of Michigan um, I don't remember the name of the farm three rivers farm or something like that maybe Skip two years, we raised red wattle, or not red wattle, Idaho pasture pigs. That was the last batch that we did. Those were awesome. The fat was amazing. And then this year, I don't remember what we're getting. I wish Rachel was here, I could ask her. I wanted to say maybe Tamworth. She's old, I think she just came out. She must've just got off work. She's heading out to the garden. 
I'll try to sync up with her and make sure I know what type of pigs we're getting for this year. I'll just measure one more times, 36 and three quarters, not 36 and a half. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. So we normally, when we put in posts like this for animal fencing, we normally do not cement any of these in. What, instead, what I do is I dig 48 inches deep. That's usually plenty well below the frost line here in Michigan, and it keeps it from heaving. So when the ground freezes, thaws, sometimes it can push things up out of the ground. It doesn't happen as long as I go 48 inches. And then what I'll do is I'll slowly put the soil back in here and then pack each layer as I go all the way around. And this thing, a month from now, it's gonna be rock solid. It's not gonna go anywhere. The, um, yeah, so our soil, I don't know if you guys caught while I was digging, like the top foot or so of our soil is black, black, black dirt. You know, like, like this stuff here. Then the next two to three feet is sand which I think I buried all the sand, but, and then like the bottom foot is all clay. So it seems to work well. The posts that I put in are holding up well. The posts that were here from before we moved here, not so much, some couple of them are starting to rot and I don't know how old they are. So I did actually, I think I've replaced a couple of the original posts because this used to be back in the day when the previous owners of our homestead put this in this was for the gentleman's wife so that she could have a horse and she kept this as her horse pen and there was like high tensile wire all the way around which we took all that high tensile stuff down shortly after we moved in and replaced it all with field fencing or goat fencing on this side and and pig fencing on this side but I'm just gonna continue this process. So I'll put handfuls of soil in and then I'll pack it in with a stick. And once we get that done, the next process is going to be to take this fence, pull this fence around the post and get it stapled in, cut off the excess and we're done with the gate. I think this is going to turn out pretty nice having a way to move animals from one side of this paddock to the other like the goats have been on this side basically all year and they had it the grass and the weeds chewed down to the ground basically before we opened it up so to be able to move animals back and forth from one side to another is going to be handy So the gate is doing good, but the fence is way loose. And I kind of knew that was, oh geez. I kind of knew that was gonna happen because I didn't pull the fence tight. Normally when you do this, you hook up like a, a tractor or an ATV or something so that you can really pull that fence tight before you staple it on. 
I didn't really have the room or the space here to do that. Plus I didn't really feel like doing it. So I'm gonna show you how to fix a loose fence like this with a pair of pliers, like a pair of nice heavy duty like lineman pliers like this. And all you do is somewhere around the middle of the span that you have, you grab it right in the center and then you twist and you do that whole row all the way down like that. And every time you do this, at least top ones, the top ones and the bottom ones are heavier gauge steel. So it takes a little more muscle to do. But every time you do this, it shortens it by a half an inch or so. And once you do the whole row all the way down, check your fence and see how it's tighter now. And it should be because you're shortening your fence and still loose. So go over about a foot, do another row all the way down. And you can keep doing that across your whole section of fence, shorten it, you know, half inch here, half inch here, half inch here. And eventually your fence will be nice and tight. Eventually it's gonna get harder. It's gonna get harder and harder to turn your wrist to put that in there, the tighter and tighter the fence gets. Oh man, I hope there wasn't dirt on this lens the whole time I've been filming. I did finally buy a new camera, but I haven't quite figured out how to use everything yet, so we're using our old one still. <laughs> Ready for the pigs? Uh, no. No? The fencing's done. We still have to do the electric wire at the bottom, but I'm going to save that for tomorrow. And I did talk to Rachel, and she confirmed they are Tamworth pigs that we are getting. So, yeah. How was your time in the garden? Got it. A decent amount accomplished. Good. So, a lot to go, but it's looking better. Good. So that's all for today. We will catch up with you again maybe tomorrow. Okay. Either way, we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.